My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jeff Regan Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's story, The Hollywood Story, or H is for the many things you gave me. It was a great day for the lion. Money all over the place. Motion picture money. Hollywood money. And all we had to do for it was stop one guy from seeing another guy. A very simple job. Except when a guy got in the way of the wrong bullet. The Hollywood story got underway along about noon in the lion's office. He was sitting behind his desk engulfed in a cloud of 50 cent cigar smoke. But through the smoke, the gleam in his eyes cut like a sunset strip searchlight announcing the opening of a popcorn stand. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, come in, come in. It's a wonderful day. Oh, looks like. Rich Uncle died, that's all? No, no, Jeffrey. But something wonderful did happen. We got a client. Yes. What else? A rich client. Yes. Hey, go on, Jeffrey. Look, Fatso, I'm no mind reader. What's the story? Jeffrey, the big moment has come at last. We've been hired by Progressive Pictures Incorporated. Oh, ah, movie money, huh, Fatso? Oh, more than that, Jeffrey. This case has all the earmarks of a big thing. I happen to know that the famous movie star Larry Winters is involved. <laughs> you see, Jeffrey, we're getting on the inside of things. Thank you, Hedda Hopper. Yeah, I, I also happen to know this case involves a $2 million picture and a real future for the Lion Detective Agency. Think of it, my boy, us being on the list of the big producers. But which list? It, now, you run right out to Progressive Pictures, Jeffrey. Uh, look up Mr. H.P. Lovejoy, the big producer. He'll give you the complete details. And, Jeffrey, above all else, be on your best behavior. The future of the agency depends on you. Really a big thing, huh, Fatso? Big! It's colossal, gigantic, stupendous! Yep, that's movie business, all right. There was a girl behind a wire cage who summoned a big studio guard with a bigger gun. The guard, uh, dressed in enough gold braid to worry an admiral, took me down the studio lot to a door with an electric eye. And the eye checked me over and okayed me for another guard behind another cage. A couple of cages later, I got to a secretary. And five secretaries after that, a door opened uh, without benefit of an electric eye, and I stood staring into the worried, bespectacled face of H.P. Lovejoy himself. You're Regan. Come in, come in. Been waiting for you. Sit here, have a cigar. Uh, no thanks. I'm going to get to the point, Mr. Regan. It's about my boy, Larry Winters. Your son? No, 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 of course not. Larry Winters, the big star. I call him my boy. I discovered him four years ago. He and Kitty Train are the two biggest stars we've got. I don't want to see anyone, Miss Clutch. No calls, no interruptions, but send Sid Rainier in. Well, that takes care of that. Now, uh, where was I? Well, you were about to tell me about Larry. Oh, yes. Oh, who sent for me, H.P.? Yes, uh, this is Regan. Uh, Regan, this is my assistant, Sid Rainier. Uh, hello, Regan. Hello. Uh, about the winter's matter, huh, H.P.? I checked the files on it again. Huh? Definitely dangerous. Yeah, uh, sit down, Sid. Uh, let me see. Now, where was I, Regan? Uh, about your actor, Larry Winters. Yes. I said I didn't want to talk to anyone, Miss Clutch. That includes you. Now, let me see. Uh, you were about to tell Regan about Larry, H.P. Oh, yes, so I was. Yes, so I was, yeah. You follow me so far, Regan? Oh, sure. Good, good. I like a man who can follow a conversation. Now about the fee. Uh, just one little thing, Lovejoy. Yes? What about Larry Winters? What? Why, I told... Oh, oh, that's right. I didn't tell you that part of it. Yeah, that part of it. Well, well, Regan, Winters is a model star, except when his pal Stubby Adair comes to town. Uh, Stubby and Larry were in the army together. Check. And when Stubby shows up in Hollywood, he looks up his pal Larry. And that's where the trouble starts. You know how it is with old army pals, Regan. One drink leads to another. Sidney! Uh, you know Larry Winters never touches the stuff. Uh, yes, yes, that's what I said. Larry never touches the stuff. But he can't stay away from Stubby's screwy deals. Uh, last time it was a, a lost gold mine. By the time Stubby got through convincing Larry what fun they'd have, uh, nothing. 
Larry was gone for a week. Stop production on the picture he was shooting. Cost the studio a fortune. And Stubby is in town again. This guy's real bright, H.P. Stubby Adair is in town again. But Larry Winters is in Long Beach on location shooting a big South Sea Island picture. Two million dollar budget. We've got to finish that picture on schedule. A lot of money invested, Regan. You understand? Sure, I understand. Now, here's the assignment, Regan. Keep Stubby Adair away from Larry for one week. Just one week. And there's a thousand dollars in it for you. You collect after the picture's finished. Well, that sounds fair enough. But wait a minute, wait a minute. It won't be easy. Larry's got a new contract coming up. If he finds out we kept Stubby undercover, he won't sign. It's got to be cautious, Regan. Very cautious. You've got to handle Stubby with kid gloves. Show him a good time. Treat him nice. Don't let him know what's happening to him. That's it. Okay. You've bought a detective. Where do I find Stubby you there? Hotel Ritz. Hollywood Hotel Ritz. We got him a suite there. He arrived this morning. We told him he'd see Larry tonight. And I fill it in from there. You fill it. Just one more little thing, Regan. We also told him a major executive from a studio would show him the town. That's me. <gasps> the man's a genius. For one week, Regan, you're the executive producer with progressive pictures. Far as Stubby is concerned. Okay, I'm a producer. Say, Regan, has anybody got you under contract? <laughs> Well, that, that's the way it started. Just me and a character named Stubby Adair. I got to the Hollywood Ritz about 1.30 and knocked on the door to room 709. My week's work peaked out. Yeah? Mr. Adair? Yeah? Name's Regan, Progressive Pictures. Oh! Come in, Mr. Regan. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You never know who's trying to cop the loot. The loot? Well, it's not so much yet, but give me one week and I'll show you action. Real action. Oh, you've got a big deal. Big? Colossal, like you picture fellas say. Gold mine? Say, who told you? Oh, that's right. Larry must have told you. Oh, that gold mine was a bum steer. This is the real thing. Real thing. I'm going to let you in on it, Regan, since you know Larry. After all, you're his boss. Uh, yeah, that's right. Regan? I have got on me at this very minute a piece of paper that's worth over a million bucks. No. Yeah. I got a 30-day option on a little piece of property up near Bakersfield that... Well... That good, huh? Good. Stupendous, like you fellas say. Regan, this hunk of land is on top of one of the hottest, blackest, bubblingest pools of oil in the whole world. That's pretty big. I'd like to let you in on it, Regan, but I, I can't. I, I just, just can't. Saved it all for Larry. That's right. For my pal Larry. Him and me was in the army together, Regan. We're pals. And uh, you're going to let him sink a few hundred thousand in drilling an oil well with you? Uh, for old time's sake. No. <laughs> no, it don't take that much. Maybe 60, 70,000. A drop in the bucket compared to what's coming out of that well. That's pretty friendly of you, Dare. <laughs> just, just call me Stubby. I'll tell you what. Regan. I like you. I like you Fine, and you're a friend of Larry's. So you're going to let me invest in an oil well? Well, it's the least I can do for a friend of Larry's. How much are you going to let me invest, Stubby? Oh, I thought maybe you could come in for, say, uh, maybe 20000 I'm saving the big size for Larry, but you can have some. That's very considerate. <laughs> it's nothing, really. You see, my option on that oil land is up in a week, one week from today. So I either got to get the dough to extend it and start drilling, or... All is lost. Exactly. It's tragic. Unless, of course, I see Larry. He'll back me, you can bet on that. Him and me was in the army together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, um, how about lunch, uh, Stubby? Good idea. In fact, I got a still better one. I'm listening. Seeing as how you're a big shot at the studio, Regan, I figure I'd let you tour me around. Do what? Show me the works out of the progressive pictures. You make like a guide, Regan, and me, I'll be a hick. <laughs> Sure, it was screwy. A little man with an oil well and a star who likes to take gambles. Stubby Adair and I took the elevator down to the lobby and started outside to my car. Only that's when it got screwier. A tall, narrow guy drifted away from one of the pillars in the hotel lobby and ambled out the door behind us. Stubby and I turned left. So did the tall guy. I passed my car and led Stubby into a drugstore. Hey, what are we going here for? Cigarettes, Stubby. Take it easy. The tall, narrow man was wearing a brown suit and a brown felt hat. He was with us in the drugstore. Outside, he was still with us. 
And Brown's suit looked in a shop window and watched us as we got in the car. We couldn't figure it but one way. Somebody put a tail job on Stubby Adair. And then he was gone. Brown suit, brown hat, melted into the crowd. Stubby climbed into my car expectantly, and we headed out to Progressive Pictures. An hour later, we finished up lunch in the studio commissary, and Stubby was ready for the 40-cent tour. But I had a question first. Ah, nice meal, Regan. Thanks. Now we take the tour, huh? In a minute. Question first. Ah, sure, Regan. You want to know about that oil well, huh? I knew you'd get bit by the bug. I want to know about a tall guy in a brown suit and a brown hat, Stubby. The guy who tailed us when we left your hotel. Hey, uh, you kidding or something? Don't play dumb with me, Stubby. You've got eyes. Regan, honest. You I saw don't... him in the drugstore. I saw you watching him. Oh. You gotta know, huh? Yeah. I gotta know. Okay, Regan. Seeing as how you're practically a partner of mine. I saw the guy in the brown suit. He's been tailing me since this morning when I got in town. That's why you were cautious back at the hotel when you opened your door. Yeah, that's why. Who is he? I don't know. You've got ideas. Regan, don't pin me this way. You're going to make me say something you won't like. You better say it, Stubby. We've got time. Well, you asked for it. Know who I think your brown suit is, Regan? Who? A private dick hired by your picture company. Maybe by you. Hired to keep me from seeing Larry Winters. What? Like you said, Regan, I ain't dumb. That guy's a shamus if I ever saw one. Larry's somewhere on location shooting a picture. I can figure that much. And the company's trying to keep me off him until after the picture. You got that all figured out. Sure I have, Regan. Oh, I'm sorry you made me show it that way. No hard feelings, huh? No, no hard feelings. Wait a minute. What is it, Regan? Stay right here, Stubby. I'll be back. Hey, Regan, what are you doing? Paying his check, walking out the main door of the commissary, was Brown Suit, the tail guy. I left Stubby Adair looking puzzled and walked after Brown Suit. It was supposed to be conversation, but Brown Sue didn't like the idea. He glanced back, saw me, and walked faster. That's when I walked faster. That's when Brown Suit started to run. And that's when I followed. Anybody too scared for conversation had more answers than I'd thought. Brown Suit slid through an alleyway, and I was behind him. Medieval village, cobblestone streets, and knights in armor. And then Brown Suit swung across the set and onto another one. It was Old West, dirt streets, cowboys spitting tobacco. It was a chase through the land of make-believe until suddenly Brown Suit headed for another alleyway and this one was no set. Big executive office building on the left, dressing rooms on the right. And at the end of the road, dead end. That's when Brown Suit suddenly turned, looked at me like he was seeing through me and grabbed at his shoulder holster. I dropped down, grabbed for mine, and we both leveled guns at the same time. Brown Suit folded in a heap and the gun in his hand fell to the ground. I moved down to the end of the dead-end street beside him. Brown suit's gun was cool, unfired. My gun? Cool, unfired. Brown suit was dead, but neither he nor I had fired a shot. In ten minutes, there were more studio soldiers surrounding me than Grant took with him to Richmond. I got a quick trip to the office of H.P. Lovejoy, and two of the local gendarmes sat behind my chair while we waited for H.P. himself to show up. That gave me plenty of time to think. Lovejoy had hired the lion and me to keep Stubby Adair away from the big movie star Larry Winters. Stubby, an old buddy of Larry's, was the kind of a guy with lost gold mines and oil wells. And Larry was the kind of a guy who invested in him. Only when I took Stubby out to the studio for a tour, a character in a brown suit tailed us and then got bullets in his chest for the trouble. That's when the studio cops arrived with me standing over the body. That's when I went to Lovejoy's office. Okay, Regan, give me the story. The full production. No, no, wait a minute. Miss Clutch, get Johnson. Tell him to contact the papers. I don't want anything out on this until I give the word. And get me Sid. All right, Regan, I'm with you so far. Now, tell me the rest of it. I picked up Stubby Adair at his hotel. We were tailed to the studio by a tall guy in a brown suit. And the... 
Thousands of cents from the HP. <laughs> About the business down back of the offices. I got some answers. Okay, Sid. Regan, catch this. Go on, Sid. Go on. Uh, the guy killed was a private detective named uh, Smith or Jones or something. His name was Clayton. Yeah. Uh, he'd been hired to tail Stubby Adair, and he was armed. Uh, maybe he was going to kill Stubby. He was hired to tail me, and he wasn't going to kill anybody. Yes, that's right. What's that you're saying, Regan? I checked his papers, his operator's license, and his gun. Somebody hired him to tail Jeff Regan, not Stubby Adair. Regan, you realize what you're saying? I realize somebody's in a big, big double cross, and somebody else around here knows about it. Yeah? So that's the way it goes. Oh, well, like I said, H.P., this guy is a genius. Finish your story, Sid. Have you got anything else? Uh, one more thing. Stubby Adair is missing. What did you say? The cops have been looking all over for him. Huh? Gone. What's the meaning of this, Regan? I hired you to stay with Adair, and I meant it. I don't like a sloppy job. Well, then get somebody else. <gasps> H.P., Regan, take it easy. You had me to stop Stubby Adair from seeing Larry Winters, your star. All right, when another guy shows up tailing us, my job is to get a check on him. And so you let Stubby Adair slip right out of your hands. I don't like that, Regan. I don't like that at all. Oh, H.P., Regan's doing the best he can. Then I'm going to tell you something, Regan. I cleared you from suspicion after my cops found you standing over a dead man. I had you brought here, and I said I'd give them a story. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll let them have you, Regan, for keeps. You couldn't make it stick, love, Joy. Not even you. But I try. Regan, I'm giving you until midnight tonight to find Stubby at air. If you don't, I let the L.A. Police Department have you for as long as they like. You understand that, don't you? <gasps> H.P.? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Thanks, love, Joy. Thanks for all your help. Regan, you'll need it. You'll need it. It was 4.30, and I had until midnight, and I needed facts and a lot of them, fast. There were two leads to take, and I made a nickel-down payment on the first one. Anthony J. Lyon, detective agency. Anthony I got work for you. Very well. What may I... Regan! You don't have to get that enthusiastic, Fatso. Who's I just... enthusiastic, you numbskull? Oh, if I could only get my hands on you, Regan. Hey, Lyon, take it easy. It might interest you to know I've just had a call from our client, H.P. Lovejoy. Yeah, Fatso? He does not like the way you're handling this case. He most decidedly does not like the way you're handling this case. Well, those things happen, Lyon. You know how it is. A personality clash. That's no excuse. I want you to be careful, Regan. I want you to be on your best behavior. I told you this job meant a lot to the agency. Yeah, but that's so. I've only been on the case a couple of hours. Give me some time. Time? I'll give you time, all right. If you don't pull this one out of the fire, Regan, you're fired. Do you hear me? Okay, okay, Fatso, save the hot air. You'll see how much hot air there is. I guaranteed Mr. Lovejoy we'd finish this job, Regan. You bungled it bad. Now, if you don't straighten it out right, you don't have to come to work tomorrow. Good day! Well, that took care of any help from Lyon. So I moved on to lead number two. Clayton, the private dick who'd been tailing Stubby Adair and me, was shot from one of two places. From a window in the office building on the left of the dead end street, or from a dressing room door on the right. When he turned toward me and reached for his gun, he was looking past me, looking at somebody behind me who killed him. Five doors with numbers on them. Four of them were nothing. The fifth was. And I tried it. It worked. Well, come in, darling. Don't just stand there. You know, you kept me waiting. Kitty Train. Progressive Pictures gift to American males. She drifted out from behind the screen and looked me up and down. That made us even. She was tall and brunette. And thin in some places and not thin in others. And her eyes sparkled. Like hot comets with no place to go. Well, come in, darling. I'll tell you everything. Everything? Well, that's what you want to know, isn't it? An idea. <laughs> when Kitty Train gets through with you, darling, you'll know everything. Well, that day I was born on a small farm in Iowa. My mother and father were very poor. I milked cows, helped plant corn, joined the 4-H club at a very tender age. My mother encouraged me in my career. She sent my picture to a Hollywood beauty contest... Soon the studio executive Wait, wait, off. wait a minute. Am I going too fast, darling? Look, lady, I didn't come here to get the story. Oh, oh, one of those. Well, darling, if you insist, I wasn't born in Iowa at all. I was born right here in Pomona. My father ran a barbershop. My mother ran off with a bald-headed tuba player. 
I worked as a waitress until somebody gave me the name of a good agent, and I spun a ride to Hollywood. Look, all uh, I want is a few answers. Uh, oh, very well, darling. I might have known that you'd never be satisfied with a routine interview. I'll give you an exclusive. My last marriage ended because John didn't like the way I did my hair. It broke me up, darling. It really broke me up. That's when I began to see Dr. Heidegger. Dr. Heidegger? The eminent psychiatrist. Tell me, darling, why is it that all psychiatrists are eminent? Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, must you leave so soon, darling? There's really more. Much more. Yeah, yeah, I must leave. Uh, by the way, my name's Jeff Regan, not darling. What? Then you aren't Harvey Chandler, the reporter for the New York World News? Nope, my error. So long, lady. Oh, Mr. Regan, wait. After all... An interview is an interview. Not today, darling. That took care of lead number two. And that's when I decided on a couple of phone calls. The first to Miss Clutch, H.P. Lovejoy's secretary, who told me after five minutes of wrangling that Larry Winters was staying at the Surf Town Hotel in Long Beach until the picture he was working in was finished. Room 615. The second call was to Bill Gregg, who writes a column for the L.A. Daily News. He calls it Speaking of Oil, and we did. Oil near Bakersfield. He told me plenty, and then he gave me the name of a geologist in Bakersfield, and I placed a quick call to his office. Rudolph T. Rembrandt speaking. This is Jeff Regan. A friend of mine suggested I call you for some information about the oil fields up there. Oh, well, Mr. Peters, the geologist, isn't in, but I'm his assistant. Perhaps I can help you. Rembrandt's the name. Rudolph Rembrandt. Yeah. Uh, no relation to the famous Rembrandt. Uh, people always ask me that, and I always tell them, no, no relation to the famous Rembrandt. Yeah, sure. Uh, look, uh, I'd like to check on some property in that vicinity. Of course, I'd uh, like to be the related to the famous Rembrandt. Just imagine, he might have willed me one of his paintings. And think what that'd be worth. But then yeah. things never work out that way, do they? <laughs> I, I had a friend once named Rockefeller. But you think he was related? Well, he most certainly was not. Look, Mr. I... Rembrandt, all I want to know is about prospects on some oil property in your area. It's oh, look... that's what you want to know. Well, I'm sorry. I can't help you on that. You see, I'm only Mr. Peter's assistant. He's a geologist. Now, if you'll call him later, I'm Never sure... Never mind. I headed for Long Beach. Long Beach, sailors and fog and two-bit rides, carnival wheels and con men and electronic bingo, and popcorn, always, everywhere, popcorn. A kind of salt spray joyride with built-in safety features. The Surftown Hotel, 11 floors of steel and glass, was at the end of Ocean Avenue, two marble dolphins guarding the door. I went in, and that was it. Slinking near the elevators, little guy, stooped shoulders, my target for tonight, stubby it there. Okay, stubby. Hey! Oh, hi, you, Regan. It's a nice night, huh? Love that ocean smell. Never mind the ocean smell out there. Where you been? You're asking me after you ditched me the commissary? Fine, pal, you turn out to be. You know what, Regan? I may not let you invest in my oil well. Listen, stubby, quit playing games. A guy was killed this afternoon. You know that. Killed? You're kidding, Regan. I heard about you Hollywood guys. Great kidders. Nobody's kidding anybody, <laughs> stubby. Brown suit. The guy following us was shot to death. Yeah? What movie was that? Oh, I remember. Night Must End. Larry played the detective. He was great. Come on, give, Stubby. <laughs> You're heading for Larry Winter's room right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Regan. 1109, I'm heading there. 1109? Never mind, Regan. You guys have been trying to keep me from seeing Larry. I know that. Now, no more tricks. Listen, Stubby, Larry Winter's room number isn't yeah, 1109. Yeah, well, for your info, Regan, I called H.P. Lovejoy's office myself and got the number, so don't hand Lovejoy me any... Lovejoy gave you Larry's room number? He left a message with one of the secretaries. Told me Larry would be there at 7 tonight, and that's now, Regan, and you ain't stopping me. Stubby, listen to me. Something's wrong. Real wrong. Larry's in room I 650... I told you no more tricks, Regan. Now get out of my way. Somebody's pulling tricks, all right, and you're it. You're really it if you go up to the 11th floor. Yeah? What plot did you steal that from, Regan? You aren't stopping me this time. The elevator door slammed shut before I could turn around. When I did, there was a little light above the door clicking off floor numbers. By the time it had hit eight, another car was in front of me. I grabbed it. It took maybe a minute to make the 11th floor, but it seemed like an hour. And down at the end of the hall, a door was closing quietly. The number on it said 1109. I drew my gun and ran for it. I didn't have time to be polite. 
Stubby Adair on the floor near the open window, gasping for breath. Next to him, Sid Rainier, H.P. Lovejoy's assistant, my bullet in his arm. Regan! Regan! He, he was, he was going to toss you out of that open window, Stubby. Eleven floors down is concrete. That's a lie. He you did, can't Regan. He did, he did. Yeah, okay, Stubby. Sid found out about that oil option you've got in Bakersfield. You say there's oil under that land? I checked that. A wildcatter on the property next to yours brought in a gusher last week. Who knows? Maybe you're in. He wanted to keep Larry from back. Tell him not to shut up. My arm, Regan. I need a doctor. You left a message with one of Lovejoy's secretaries, Rainier. Deliberately sent Stubby to the wrong room. I need a doctor, I tell you. You shot brown suit the private op you'd hired. You know, that didn't make sense. Until I realized it was me you were after. Only I dropped down. He didn't. Regan, quit this talking. You gotta get me to a doctor. Sure, Sid. Sure, I'll get you to a doctor. Well, you don't count on him. What you're gonna get, he can't cure. Stubby Adair kept his option, and Sid Rainier went to jail. Thus, the lion was all smiles when I turned up at his office the next morning. Jeffrey, my boy, come in, come in. Oh, that means we're friends again, huh, Fatso? You're friends? Oh, of course we're friends, Jeffrey. Whatever made you think we were? Oh, nothing much. Just that you were about to fire me last night. Oh, that. Well, let's all change now, Jeffrey. Everything came out just like I said it would. What came out? Why, why, the new movie business. Remember I told you if you'd stay on your best behavior, Jeffrey, we'd be in line for more movie business. Well, now we've got it. <laughs> and you'll never guess who our new client is. Okay, I'll never guess. Who? Larry Winters, Jeffrey, the big star. Winters hired us? Yes, Jeffrey, he wants protection. It, not for himself, for a friend. A, a friend? It didn't get the friend's name, doesn't matter. You see, Larry Winters and the friend were in the army together. Go on, Fatso. And Larry and this friend are flying up to Bakersfield this afternoon to look at some valuable property. They want you to go along, Jeffrey. Isn't that wonderful? Lion, if Larry Winters goes up to Bakersfield this afternoon, that means the picture he's working on will be delayed. Well, who cares? This is business, Jeffrey. Just thought you might be interested. Progressive pictures won't like it. Jeffrey, if Larry Winters wants to go to Bakersfield... Just thought you'd want to know because we don't get paid, Lion, until Winters finishes that picture. Jeffrey, for the last time, I don't care what happens to progressive pictures. What did you say? That's it, Fatso. If he takes that plane, no picture. No picture, no money. What kind of a stunt does Winters think he's pulling? Walking out on a picture that way. What kind of a prima donna does he think he is? Jeffrey, don't just sit there. Get out there and stop that play. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Prug and William Fifield, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy and stars Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Arant. Jeff Regan, investigator, is heard each week at the same time over CBS. This is Bob Stevenson speaking, inviting you to be with us again for more suspense and mystery and adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. Investigator.